Power Rangers, a slice of nostalgia from a quarter of a century ago. Yep, that's right. It has been more than 25 years since the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were introduced to us on TV. Are we jealous of those who got to grow up with it? Oh, absolutely. Because of all those moves, those jazzy outfits and bright colors, fancy gadgets, and above all, a fighting spirit against evil. It added up to a show that caught the attentions of all those it targeted. The way Power Rangers have been embedded into our lives is immaculate. Some of us might even be able to chant everything, from Rangers names to villain names, from their devices to episode details, and to new realizations that we come upon as we discuss the show with others. With this video, we will try to do justice to the landmark show as it was, from which so many other Rangers emerged and were eventually brought to light. The newer ones were Space Patrol Delta, SPD, Dino Thunder, and Ninja Storm. While some of the older ones that directly followed the OG Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were called Zeo, Turbo, and In Space. Each of the 17 other recreations under the tag of Power Rangers carried its own charms. Guess who paved the way? Only the Mighty Morphins. Lessons were learned, plots were forwarded, and as a result, stories just as good, if not better, kept on being made for some 30 odd years. But it wasn't always a rosy scenario behind the scenes, or on it for that matter. And sometimes knowing all about your favorite Power Rangers origins from way back in 1993 can be exciting and maybe eye-opening too. Ready to find out what we're getting at? Here you go. And let us know how many of these you were aware of and what was brand new information. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Disney's ownership and Marvel hovering around. In the first year of the 2000s era with the Power Rangers Time Force series coming around, Disney took over ownership of the series. A new generation of Power Rangers fans was catered to. These ownership rights came to a close in 2010 with Power Rangers RPM. Prior to that at some point, Marvel and Stanley himself had tried to make a show with the plot lines of a popular Japanese TV show, Super Sentai. Adaptation and final broadcast to America. The first American variant as we know it, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, was an adaptation to such an extent that clips from the original Japanese show were used for the action sequences in the American version on the small screen. It was so central to the plot that the whole storyline of Mighty Morphins was made after the writers of the show in America received the said footage of action scenes way in advance. Sometimes though, the actors had to do life-threatening stunts all on their own and the risk factor kept multiplying, worrying the actors themselves. There was budget management at the cost of actors' payments. Word went around that the show wasn't paying its cast well. In fact, actor Austin St. John had said on record that he had reached homelessness after the show came to a close. He had to resort to living in his car at some point. Another instance is heard of, which reportedly happened at the start of the show. As early as after the airing of the pilot episode, actress Audrey Dubois who played the Yellow Ranger's role was replaced by Trini. Trini remained the face of the role for the longest time and thus became who we know today as Yellow Ranger. Dubois had demanded more pay and was the first of many to do so. The show's way of dealing with those who demanded more pay was to simply replace them with another person in the same capacity. Going ahead, we have some stories for you from the casting of the show overall. We have quite a mixed bag of findings to put under here. Some of them might make your eyes go wide for the right reasons and some of them for the wrong ones. Let's start with the worst and feel better by the end of it, okay? We'll spring some happy instances here and there. Don't worry. The age thing. The cast was to be represented as students, but they surprisingly hired actors a few years too old. The actors certainly did not look their age and on screen it just looked odd and felt unrelatable to a great extent. There was also a clash with the cast's reputation outside of work. They were all the partying kind of people creating loud chaos and getting in illegal trouble more often than not. That was a bad place to be for anyone who was quite literally a hero to young minds of a generation. Patient and wise, you shall command the powerful Triceratops dinosaur. Blue Ranger had woes and serious allegations to make. David Yost, who played the role of the mighty Blue Ranger, had to battle homophobia, he said. While the show was on, he would be yelled at or abused. 
It got to a point where he came to think that he was made to leave the show because of the fact that he was homosexual. He was the only one with perfect attendance though, being a part of 155 episodes. Since the initial run had begun, no other cast member had appeared in every single episode of the original series Mighty Morphin, except Yost. Green Ranger sets records. Up next with our Green Ranger, embodied by actor Jason David Frank. Overall, this man holds two records. The first one is with his appearance in a mass of 217 episodes of the Power Rangers series. He also became the White Ranger, then the Red Zeo, the Red Turbo after, and was also seen as the Black Dino Thunder Ranger. The color palette and changing scheme that you see here is the most for any Ranger ever, which gave him his second record. It started with Mighty Morphin though. Brian Cranston. Multiple appearance alert. Also in the Mighty Morphin series was actor Brian Cranston, who lent his voice to Fiend's Snizzard and Twin Man. He came to play a role in the Power Rangers film as Zordon in 2017. The Mighty Morphin caused traffic to malfunction for hours. What? Fun fact. The Rangers once caused a dreadful traffic jam, though it was not exactly their fault. It really was their popularity that played a part. The entire cast turned up at the Universal Studios to take part in an event, and the park made a record by itself for attendance. With 35,000 individuals lining up there, a 30-year-old turnout record lay in smithereens in both directions of the motorway. Traffic to the park was backed up for about five miles. The social impact of the Power Rangers series was, as mentioned before, undeniable. In that light, several things seem to have been ignored easily in those times, but probably wouldn't be missed by the sharper, more aware brains of our days. <laughs> Parents of underage viewers had concerns on varying levels. As far as sensitization to violence was concerned, it seemed to be limited to the initial years of the first release. Parents were put off by the amount of gore and grime being depicted on the show and pushed for the show to be taken off air. A common worry for both generations of parents, which means including parents these days, would perhaps be the Megazords. The Rangers had a Megazord, and so did the character of Tommy on the show. When combined, the Megazords left a piece sticking out almost like a sore thumb. To most eyes, it was shaped like a phallus, and not considered appropriate for children to view. For all we know, it could just be bad placement. However, for a show in the 90s, it was a matter that warranted alarm bells. For parents of today, the thought of children seeing something like that remains scandalizing. Homophobia wasn't the only socially relevant issue within the show. On another surprising note, instances of racism on the show have been noticed. Maybe not directly, but racial implications seem to be quite apparent in the old show when seen in the clearer light that today's society shines on it. The Yellow Ranger being Asian, the White Ranger being played by literally a white man, and a black man having the role of the Black Ranger weren't issues quite highlighted back then. Typecasting with racial undertones is why this is being called out when such issues are discussed by and large. Since the upcoming milestone of completion of 30 years is being heavily talked about by the media these days, such slip-ups continue to be scrutinized even more and by all means. Special treats for the sharp-eyed. Black Ranger, played by Walter Jones, was in real life missing a finger. Turns out that was never really mentioned on the show, except in passing when it was revealed that he had an accident at four years of age. The Yellow Ranger was supposed to be played by a man. In the Mighty Morphin series though, as we have seen, the role was essayed by a woman, or two for that matter. That's why an overskirt was not made a part of the Yellow Ranger's final outfit, making it slightly different from the Pink Rangers. If given a skirt, there would occur continuity errors with the action scenes being borrowed from the older Japanese show. Last, but definitely not least, in an episode titled Shell Shocked, I mean, heck yeah we were, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles made an appearance and lent some much needed help to our rangers. It was like adding a cherry on top of a well-baked cake, really, and the audience welcomes that interaction. Closing in. Speaking specifically of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the beginning of it all, there are reports of Jonathan Entwistle planning a reboot of the series on Netflix. Not much has been heard of yet, but we await some good news on that front. Via a tweet in November 2021, 
Entwistle had confirmed that the Power Rangers universe would grace Netflix. After which, we next heard from him in an almost cryptic Instagram comment on a Power Rangers fan page of all places, where he hinted at a brand new spectrum of the widely loved heroes being cast. All that exists is speculation and impending decisions, it seems, apart from unreliable leaks on Twitter. But we trust the creator and the creator only, so we wait, because it seems there's a lot to make up for, and a lot to live up to. We wait some more, but while we wait, there are some things to note. 2022 is about halfway through, and it seems that Power Rangers fans have a reason to celebrate. 2023 will bring us to the completion of the 30th year since the Power Rangers series was first broadcast. The series has given several Ranger variants to the audience over these years, and it goes without saying that a reunion is reasonable. In a variety of episodes from different seasons, cast members of previous seasons have made appearances as guests. It would be interesting to see if some sort of character development, backstory, and or more screen time could be given to these stars, as involving them would mean a lot to fans from over the years. Whoever is apparently responsible for and in charge of these celebrations, shh, hello, are you listening? Might we suggest individual reunion episodes, maybe one dedicated to a few sets of rangers? Because in our humble opinion, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers have not been heard from for a long time, and we wonder what they have been up to, much like the others. Be it the initial Saban era or the relatively new Disney one, the glorification of Power Rangers is deserved, albeit with a few changes to suit the current audience's views and demands from a show of that stature. It is a series many call home, many have grown up with, and many see as pure nostalgia. We hope all the hype will be catered to.